It really isn't long before this returns. He's excited as we are. What's going on everyone? My name is Neil. I'm over from the Stinger channel. Now listen, there's been some big signings in the transfer window so far. And there's been some that have gone under the radar. We're going to join them up and have a look at the ones to watch straight away. Gavin Bazunu, who moves to Southampton from Man City. Now, he hasn't even played a game for Man City. 15 million player a season at Portsmouth last season. By all accounts, he's going to be incredible. City weren't sure of selling him, so much so that they included a buyback clause for him. For the sake of this 11, we're moving everyone to Forest, so Forest are winning. But even in game last season, you can see the FM scouts knew what they were talking about. Now 20, even better with a full season at Portsmouth. Watch this boy. Aaron Hickey moves to the Premier League from Bologna in Serie A. He made 36 appearances in the first team last season. No mean feat, 17 million. So Hickey comes to Brentford with a big fee of 17 million, but he did play a lot of games in Serie A last season and he was a wanted man. I've slotted him in at left back, but he is two footed, youth on his side, great signing for Brentford, watch him go. I expect him to do an inverted role for Brentford as well as a traditional wing back. 17 million, sell on value as FM says there, could be huge. Now Spence moves to Spurs from Middlesbrough in a fee up to 20 million. He was a key player last season, but not for Middlesbrough in Forest promotion push. Potential, that's what Spurs have signed here. They do have two other right backs at the club, so he has a bit of competition, but people are saying who saw him last season, he'll break through. Bit of a late bloomer, at the start of the season, Warnock and Middlesbrough didn't want him. He goes to Forest and just excites the crowd. Forest fans love him. FM says his value at the minute is 15 to 20 million. It's only going one way. Youth, English, great signing. Moussa Niakate, mines to Forest. 10 million, only had a year left on his contract. The captain last season. Possibly one of the best signings yet. He's young, he's quick, he's fast. Centre back for Forest, just came to the Premier League. What a landmark signing. Forest are making a statement of all their signings this season, and this is one of my favourite ones. We'll get to the second one later on. But as a centre back who can play with the ball, fast, quick, strong, ticks all the boxes, sell on value will be huge. Watch them start sniffing around him. A big signing in this one Sven Bottom and Lille to Newcastle, 37 million. He was heavily, heavily linked to AC Milan, but Newcastle swooped in. Now, Botman seems to be talked about for years, but Newcastle have been the ones to go for him. 37 million is a lot of money, but when teams like AC Milan are sniffing, you can see why. It's been a long time since Newcastle had a dominating centre back and six foot four, 89 kilograms, and the left footed one as well, which is super rare. This could be a landmark signing for Newcastle in their push to become one of the top six. This one caught a lot of people by surprise. Bubakar Kamara joining Villa on a free transfer when his Marseille contract ran out. Like I said, big surprise this one. Villa did the business early, got him through the door, catching teams on the hop. Kamara could be huge. There's a theme on a lot of these players and it is youth and he has youth on his side. Wanted by loads of clubs around Europe. He signed a whopping contract for five years, I believe. Selling value is going to be huge. Like FM says there, can play in multiple positions. What a signing for Villa. Big signing by Vieira, Decore comes from Lens for 22 million. Now I don't know if you saw on the image, but the Lens skipper deemed Decore irreplaceable from that team. That's how important he was to them. With the style of football Palace play, they've always been lacking slightly in central midfield, especially now Conor Gallagher's gone back to Chelsea. This guy can do it all, combative, can pass the ball, high energy, he's like a bit of a Kante. And again, 21, 22 years old, wow. Big move from Leeds, Tyler Adams in from Leipzig, around 20 million we believe. Now Leeds have American backers, an American coach, now they've got themselves a quality American midfielder. That's obviously not the only reason they signed him, Tyler Adams is highly thought of. Being at RB Leipzig and Leeds manager Jesse Marsh played with him when he was at New York Red Bulls. He's going to be that box to box high energy midfielder for Leeds, interesting to see how he does. Fulham's statement signing of the summer was João Paulina from Sport in Lisbon, beating Wolves to his signature. A lot of the players we featured today have been about potential. This guy, at 25, is in his prime. 
25 years old. A lot of the players we have focused on today have been 21, 22. But as I said, he is in his prime. Can play in that central midfield destroyer role. Deceptively tall at six foot three. So he's a big guy. Can drop in at centre back as well. The beat, the powers of the Portuguese pull from Wolves to get this guy into the club. Fulham, this could be a key signing in the battle to avoid the drop. At this point, we've got defence, midfield and goalkeepers sorted. It's starting to look pretty strong. We've still got the strikers to come and we're also going to see how this team fares in a one-off match. The second of Forrest's key signings, Taiwo Awoni from Union Berlin for a big, hefty 18 million. When you get promoted, there's two things you need to do. Shore it up the back and find someone to score your goals. I think Forrest have got that both sorted. Around all 18 million Forrest has spent on the guy that's surely going to be their main striker. Interesting fact, started off at Liverpool, went on loan everywhere before finding some success in the Bundesliga. Big, strong, fast, powerful player. Can this be the guy that will score the goals to keep Forrest up? I think he will be. Julian Alvarez signed for Man City in January but went back on loan to River Plate. This will be his first season with City. It's kind of gone under the radar because of the Haaland signing, but Alvarez could be key, especially with City cash in on Sterling and his flexibility in positions. People will think he's a striker, but he can also play any position off the striker, false nine, wide. He's 21-22, already capped for Argentina, scored six in a match in the Copa Libertadores. As a City fan myself, I'm sorry, I'm so excited about this guy. I think he could be the low-key signing of our season. So that's my 11 to watch. I thought I'd go for new signings, so new blood in new teams. Let me know down below who you think is going to be a key signing. One that I've missed maybe, everyone's got an opinion, love to hear yours. Now, we're going to see what that team that I set up in that like box formation will do in a match. So we're going to play this game against Southampton. You can see in the pre-season the boys have struck up a brilliant understanding. Look at their midfield four there. They absolutely love them playing with each other. And then you've got your front two of Alvarez and Awoni. Let's see what goes on. Dominated the first 15 minutes, and then from the left-hand side, there's Botman. Little through ball to Tyler Adams, and Spence there rifles it in, showing his ability on the ball. And our second just before half-time, the midfield battlers win the ball back, and Adams, and there's the pace and power of Awoni. Through, and great finish for two. Third, just after half-time, Alvarez with a little dink to Spence down the right-hand side. Expect to see a lot of that, and there's Awoni again, glancing header, using his six-foot frame. 3-0. With five minutes to go, Botman striding out of defence. We'll see him do that for Newcastle quite a lot with a lovely little through ball to Alvarez and a nice finish. That's 4-0. Well, Prowse doing what he does, by the way. Free kick in the top bins. And that's a wrap. The ones to watch 11 with a big 4-1 win over Southampton dominating the match. So there you have it. All a Premier League team needed to do was buy all them players this summer and they would have been banging. So pop down in the comments below your players to watch. Let's have a look at them. We might do a bit of a player focus on them. Speaking of player focus, stick around the channel soon. You'll see one on the legendary Freddie Adu. You'll see championship players to watch. All sorts coming. 